Well, we've heard the scriptures proclaimed. We've heard Good Friday proclaimed. Now let's hear the scriptures unpacked. Will you pray with me? Father, in this time now, bring us front and center to the foot of the cross. Make us to read, to mark, to learn, and inwardly digest those blessed words. It is finished. Many people forget that C.S. Lewis was a poet before he was an apologist for the faith. In fact, he continued to write poetry his entire life. One of his finest poems is Love's as Warm as Tears. It's a poem that I encountered as I was finishing uh, George Sayers' um, biography of him called Jack. Uh, Here's the first stanza of Love is Tears. Pressure within the brain, tension at the throat, deluge, weeks of rain, that is to say tears, haystacks afloat, featureless seas between hedges where once was green. Lewis wrote the poem after the death of his wife, Joy. If you know Lewis's story, God's extravagant and gracious covering for our own sinful lives. From the Word became flesh to Jesus' death, and it is finished. God meets us and can redeem each season of our lives by the once for all offering up of his Son. Verse 30 also tells us that our Lord spoke these words after drinking sour wine. What's the connection there? Earls with were, uh, excuse me, myrrh. That wine was offered, you may know, as a sedative wine. Uh, this cheap oxus, vinegar wine, and it, it also sounds vinegary. It sounds awful to say, oxus, burrs and ordinary soldiers. Even more astounding is that he was given the drink because he asked for the drink. I thirst, Jesus said. Jesus was willing to drink not just the sour wine, but the cup of sin, the cup of God's wrath, the cup of all the effects of sin. That is to say, he was willing to stand in our place. Friends, is this your God tonight? Is this your God? Christians serve a God who says of sin and the effects of living in a world of sin, give it to me. I will drink it. Put it into my hands. I am willing. Our God says that. Who could doubt the love and the care of a God like this? Who could doubt that God? Earlier we we heard the account of the offering up of Isaac. And if you read that account in light of this, it changes everything, or at least it clarifies everything. The entire point of that episode is not that God is so mean so as to exact Isaac's blood, but rather that he will do himself what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen? For God will provide for himself the lamb. That is the God that we worship this evening. Friends, is this your God? That's the first thing we're taught in the words, it is finished. But the second thing is this, it is finished means there is absolutely nothing more to add or subtract from what's been done. There there is nothing else to be subtracted or added. St. Matthew gives us this, this little detail after Jesus speaks the words, it is finished. 
You remember what it is? It's that the temple is not only torn, but torn from what? From top to bottom. From top to bottom. Not from bottom to top. That is to say, from heaven to earth. Because God dealt with sin. It is dealt with completely. You can no more add to or subtract from Jesus' work than you can add to or subtract from infinity. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is His mercy also towards those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as He set our sins from us. Amen? Horatio Spafford, the hymnist, who wrote it as well with my soul, he knew this truth. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. I've come to the conclusion that in life there are two ways to live. One is to live in and through and under the words, it is finished. Or to live in and through the words, unfinished. Just two ways. It is finished or unfinished. In Christ, it is finished. And thirdly, it is finished means that if one and two are true, that God dealt with sin, there's nothing more to add or subtract. You know what, that, you know what the third thing is that it means? This is the beautiful truth for each of us in Christ. It means that you can go free. You can go free. Right now. Right here. It means that you can go free to love and to serve God as you were truly meant to in your life. That can be yours. Truly free. Truly the way God wants us to be. Augustine famously said, love God and do what you will. Love God and do what you will. That's exactly the kind of life we're given through repentance from sin and faith in Christ, friends. That's what he does for us. Some of us lock our cages from the inside, though, don't we? We refuse the love of God. We run from God in different ways, really probably in two different ways. Some of us choose the burden of morality. Some of us say to God, I'll measure up to my own standard. I won't bow at the cross. I won't admit that I am in need. Because to see the cross for what it is, is to admit our great need, is it not? Some of us run the other way. We run into immorality. We look for satisfaction and we look for freedom there, but you know what we find? Only more captivity. Only deeper darkness. There's no freedom in either of those. They're both dead ends. But it is finished, it is done, means true freedom for us. Freedom to love and to serve God with all our lives. It is finished. You know, Jesus had no need to speak these words for himself. He had no need at all to speak these words. He spoke them for us. He spoke them for you. To give us the confidence that no matter where we're at in life, he can meet us there. Bringing us redemption and newness of life in Him. I want to end tonight with uh, the poem. It's a hymn too, but I think it was a poem first. His Be the Victor's Name by Samuel Gandhi. 
His be the victor's name who fought the fight alone. Triumphant saints no honor claim. Their conquest was his own. By weakness and defeat, he won the reed and crown, trod all the foes beneath his feet by being trodden down. He hell in hell laid low, made sin, he sin o'erthrew, bowed to the grave, destroyed it so, and death by dying slew. What though the accuser roar of ills that I have done, I know them well and thousands more. Jehovah findeth none. Bless, bless the conqueror slain, slain by divine decree, who lived, who died, who lives again for thee, my soul, for thee. I'll leave you tonight to receive those words for yourself. It is finished. Spoken for you. It's done. There's nothing more.